Hello everyone, this is Donnie, aka Elevated, and thank you for tuning in again today. If you haven't been in our Discord channel recently, you should definitely go hit that link in the description below and join up because this video is going to be something that only people in our Discord will know about, which is that recently we have been doing a replay review session on stream. Basically anyone can hop in the chat on my personal Twitch channel, drop a replay ID, a couple of questions about the game, whether that's itemization, team fighting, laning, whatever. And then we'll go over the replay and just kind of do a little bit of coaching on stream for anybody to watch and learn from. And so this video is going to be just some highlights from the first session that we did a couple days ago. And this is something that I'm hoping to do at least a couple times a week, if not like every other day, because there seems to be a lot of excitement about it and lots of people learning a lot of things. So enjoy the highlights. I think there's some interesting lessons to learn from this one, and there will be more of this kind of content coming out. Let me know if you like this kind of content, and we hope to see you both in our Discord and on the Twitch stream, dropping your own replay in chat for us to look at and learn from in the future. All right, enjoy the video. And just keep an eye on where the lane is. Like if the lane starts getting pushed up, then you can go pull, but against the Sand King, most likely the lane is just gonna constantly be under your tower, which kind of means like, and that's actually something to really look at as a support. If you are a support and the wave is like being pushed into your tower, if there's no risk of your carry being dove really hard, then you should just leave the lane and go do something else. Like stack or, um, you know, go ward or whatever. Like, there's actually no point in being under tower trying to help your carry deny slash last hit unless he's going to be dove if you leave the lane. Here's something that actually I think is really important to talk about, not just for this replay, but for everything, is that you should always just have, like, an internal clock going in your head as you're doing stuff so you slept this guy is his team just gonna let him just be slept and then gripped probably not they're gonna be tping in they're gonna be running here so you have you should have a clock in your head that is going you know like okay sleep lasts for what how long is sleep I forget six seconds something like that so six seconds how long does a tp take tp is like three seconds so you should know that as soon as you sleep this guy, there's probably within about a second, there's gonna be somebody TPing to this tower or TPing to the shrine and trying to come save their TA because their TA is the highest net worth. They wanna keep this guy alive. And so you should know that probably within like four or five seconds, this is no longer going to just be a solo TA. There's gonna be other heroes in the vicinity and you need to keep like that in mind when you're deciding whether you wanna actually go for this kill or not. And as soon as he goes invis, I mean, the answer is no, okay? This is no longer going to be a kill. Your Spear Breaker does not have dust. You do not, you do have dust, but you're gonna have to run up through a mine into no vision, right? You have no idea if there's any heroes here or here or here or here for that matter. So you're, re you're running up into no vision on the off chance that you're going to be able to finish this guy before heroes TP in. It's already been like, seven or eight seconds since you initially slept him my guess is that there's going to be at least two heroes coming in it means that you're essentially going to take a three on three uh on their side of the map near areas that they can be reinforced and perhaps like a three on five because there's absolutely no chance that your monkey king is going to be there there's no chance that your pl is going to run in um unless a real fight breaks out so this just seems kind of like you know your spear breaker is baiting you into a bad situation. And as a result, you kind of hang out here on the low ground, doing nothing for a while. You get like, eaten and die. Okay, so let's break this one down. Your tusk goes in onto the brew. Your phoenix reveals everybody. I would just global silence right now. Use your global silence right now. Yep. Especially with as soon as he eggs, just global. You press R right here, you win this fight 100% of the time. 
but as a result, he gets the split off. They're just gonna go in and probably kill this egg. Still no global. Killing spree. Yeah. If you globaled right there when you went on that brewmaster initially and Phoenix came in to egg, you win this fight for sure. Oh, yeah. Don't be afraid to use it, man. Especially against a brew. Like, and since brew gives you the audio cue, he says three of me and then he splits. As soon as you hear that, just press global silence because he's like their, he is their team fight. They have no team fight other than brewmaster. So if you just eliminate that team fight, you win all of the team fights. Phoenix is over here. Phoenix dies. Morphling comes over. He starts a fight. You are right here. You have global silence off the cooldown. He starts to split. Global silence. Global silence right now. <laughs> yeah, a little too late. And as a result, you guys are all going to die. Basically, if I'm playing this game, I can't really show you on my keyboard, but um, I'm just gonna keep my finger on the R button like the entire game because stopping Brewmaster Split is gonna win us this game. Um, and that's probably why it fell hard is because this brew is consistently getting a split off without having any way to uh, to get rid of the silence. Like there's no Lotus Orbs or anything like that. So if you just global, then they actually can't take team fights. Links, this is not a hero that farms very well. He has no wave clear. He has to hit every single creep over and over and over. One target. He has 75 CS. And then there's you, 46 CS, and you have incredible wave clear, incredible last hitting ability. So, yes, you are 5, 3, and 5 at this point. But you have a bracer and phase boots at 15 minutes into the game. So you need to be hitting creeps a lot more than you are. Here's here's what I would say for basically all legend and archon level players and below is I can just make a, a broad statement that you guys are trying to fight too much. Fight less, farm more, and you will start winning a lot more games because you'll have twice as many items as everybody else in that bracket. This is one of the hardest things to recognize in Dota, is that like when when is a good time to be aggressive, when is a good time to back off? Most people are either too aggressive or too passive. In this case, as soon as she pops that, you have to just go back and get this CS. You, you can't chase. Like you're never gonna get that kill. So then getting all up in her face here, tanking the creep wave. You're kind of just putting yourself in a losing situation. You're a hero that basically gets a free kill as soon as you hit level 6 because you have ball lightning. This gives you the ability to instantly close the gap and do a ton of damage and even dodge stuff and damage from the other hero. So if you think about it like that, like it's really not that important to be super aggressive until you're level 6 because there's just such a low, <laughs> a low chance that you get a kill before level six and such a high chance that you get a kill after level six so you don't really need to push your advantage so early right because you have this power spike at level six that like guarantees you a kill so if you're risking your life you're if you're risking your regen to try and get a kill before you have a guaranteed kill it just doesn't really make any sense it's like it's like a void jumping in without chronosphere to the middle of a team fight because he wants to get a kill on somebody, but he has Chronosphere in 10 seconds. Why not just wait 10 seconds to fight, you know? Kind of have that idea, not just in the moment, but like how is this gonna play out over the next 20 to 30 seconds, over the next couple of minutes? And I mean, rotating before you have level six just makes absolutely no sense. This is such a waste of time. Um, I think even even for the bounty runes, I don't love it unless you have a TP. Because look at this. I mean, yeah, you get the bounties. I think that your Grimstroke probably could have gotten the bounties, though. And 
you're a quarter of the way through level five. Meanwhile, Lena is like getting close to level seven. But I mean, look at this. Like she's two levels ahead of you because you made this weird rotation to the top lane. And that definitely didn't need to happen. And now you're super, super pressured because she can just like run at you. <laughs> you know, you're dead. Dyer's middle tower you should be dead. Attack. Why is she not gunnablating you? What the hell? So confused right now. You should have 100% died there. <laughs> I don't agree with your item build. I definitely think that you need to go Yules. I would say either skip the Kaya and go Yules into Orchid or go Kaya Orchid. Or, sorry, Kaya Yules, but you cannot play this game for like 30 minutes without either a Yules or a BKB. So either you go second item BKB or you go second item Yules. But if you're trying to play this game against the Silencer without a defensive item, then you're making this game way harder than it needs to be. And here's the thing. Orchid gives you a bunch of damage. Kai gives you a bunch of damage. But you know how much damage you do when you're dead? Zero. End of story. All right, we're going to go on to the next replay. I'm going to make it. I have the creeps. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So you see what I did there where I kind of turned back at the last second? Here I come. I mean, yes, you want to get hit by the creeps, but you can't just you can't just side pull and then just run into your creep wave because Let's these creeps go. don't have a long enough leash to actually hit you. I think there's like maybe one of them that does, but not all of them do. So once you get to like right about here at this tree, you have to actually like run back into the creeps that are running at you like right about here you're going to want to kind of run back and then that'll aggro onto you but if you just keep running into the creep wave then the creeps will just unleash and they'll go back into the they'll go back into the camp